So I'm going to start out with uh, Premiere Pro. We have lots of uh, new apps. We have a brand new uh, app called Adobe Prelude. I won't get into that right now, but you go, go ahead and check out Adobe.com over at Adobe TV and check that out. But I'll go ahead and just give you a quick uh, look at what's new in Adobe Premiere Pro as well as Adobe After Effects. It's uh, huge releases for us and again causing lots of uh, buzz in the booth. It's been absolutely fantastic. So let's jump in and just show you some of the new features and what, uh, what people are saying about it. First of all, when you take a look at this application, you start to see it's all about big uh, icons and, and just, just viewing area that just jumps right out at you. So lots of the interface we've uh, taken from users that have been saying, you know, they really like Premiere. Maybe they're coming from uh, Avid or they're coming from Final Cut. And we really took this cycle to listen to figure out what can we do to make the experience better. So I'll give you a, qu a quick idea of some of the things we've been working on. So I'm going to pop out to my hard drive. This is my media browser. And I'll go to my tapeless folder here. And I'm going to hit the tilde key, which will take it out full screen. So you see all of my different camera types here. And we pretty much support uh, all of the main cameras in the industry. So you see I've got P2 cameras here, JVC, uh, very cool cameras from RED. I've got uh, cameras from Sony, XD Cam, GoPro cameras. And what's great about these, these are just, uh, these folders that you see here are just uh, direct copies from those cards. So if I were to go into maybe a um, Panasonic camera, so let's just jump into a P2 card. This is full P2 card structure. And when I do this, you'll instantly see how CS6 gives me this beautiful view of what's going on. Now, I even have the ability to control the size of these uh, icons down here. And you'll notice that, and I am just running on a standard 17-inch uh, MacBook Pro, so really, really fast. So if I come in here and just start moving these icons, uh, that these picons, if you will, these video icons, I'm not clicking on the mouse. I'm just uh, moving my mouse side to side. It's very, very responsive. So this has been uh, an incredible, incredible response uh, by the customers because they're looking at this. You don't have to look at the name. It's all about the media. I can click on this. And as soon as I click on this, you'll notice this yellow line comes up. What's really great about this is we work with great companies um, that are all supporting Thunderbolt, I'm happy to say. So remember what I was telling you in the beginning. Uh, this will even come out, uh, the Thunderbolt port, uh, from, say, uh, customers or, or companies like AJA, Blackmagic, uh, Bluefish, and Matrox. They've got wonderful products that actually come out the SDI or HDMI port. And I can actually set an endpoint here and I can set an out point and be able to start to work on my edit. I can do what's called a JKL and move these files back and forth so I can start to work on my rough cutting. So the interface is really, really great. And if I go down, let's take a look at, say, uh, some red footage here. I can double click on this. I've got some great footage here. Let me go to red 5K. I'll bring this up really big. And look at, I'm just scrubbing on a laptop, Red 5K. It's absolutely incredible. So it's a very, very fast release, uh, a very quick uh, third generation, 64-bit computing, as we say. So it's, it's, again, all about the media. So it's been really, really great. Now I can uh, take a look at a couple other quick things for you. In the user interface, it's all about uh, customizing to fit your needs. I've got a little plus icon down here. As you can see here, I can start to drag these down and create different environments for how I want to edit. So very customizable. Uh, a lot of users that we've talked to, especially in the broadcast space, they don't really like to have what's called transport controls over here. So you actually have the ability to go into the UI and turn some of those off. So depending on what it is that you do, if you're very keyboard driven, it's really all about you and the experience of your uh, workspace there. So it's been absolutely uh, fantastic. We also support new camera types, uh, Airy Raw, uh, the new uh, Canon uh, C3 uh, 300 and 500, uh, Canon Mark III, uh, lots of new, uh, new camera types there that have just been great to work with. Now, also I should mention that um, we've added extra panels, like we've got uh, special time code panels. We've had a lot of customers asking us, uh, you know, it would be great if I could have my own custom panel that will just run time code. I can take this panel up full screen because I might be across the room and I just want to have large numbers and so forth. Now let's go back and talk about performance. I started the presentation out talking a little bit about, you know, the work we're doing with Intel and optimizing uh, the system. One of the great things to show 
is if I bring up a, uh, a timeline here, and I'll just loop this timeline, I'm going to start to modify the interface. And I can bring some of this right, right back down. As you notice, the video never stopped playing. So I can even go out and say launch uh, After Effects, for example. After Effects is going to continue to, uh, to launch, not get interrupted in what it's doing. Premiere is actually still playing in the background. Let me just open up a project over here to show you that Premiere is actually still playing in the background. Here I am inside of After Effects. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. When have you ever seen two applications, completely different pipelines, playing at the same time? Third bit generation. Again, some of the work we've been doing with Intel on optimizing the system. It's absolutely incredible. So when I saw that, I was absolutely blown away. And that's not even part of the demo. That's just me being weird, because I think it's very cool. So I love, I love faster, faster, faster. So we look, always look forward to different things we can do with Intel each year to make things faster for the customer. So a couple other things uh, people have been asking about is let's talk about effects and different things that, um, that we can do. Um, one of the things that we, we have here that uh, sort of presents a problem is I have four different layers of video. I need to apply an effect uh, on these different layers of video. Ways that I can do that is I can drag maybe a color corrector to each one of these, but then I'm asking the processors to uh, to really work four times as hard as they need to. Plus, it's very cumbersome to go in and make changes. So if, you, if you're an After Effects user, a Photoshop user, you kind of know this thing called adjustment layers that you see down here. So adjustment layers are going to allow me to put this layer above all the other layers and make one change and have it trickle through. So I'll come over here, add an adjustment layer, and I'll go to my effects window here, and I'm going to have this video uh, play. Then I can add an adjustment layer here. And you'll notice that it's doing its best to try to play. Well, we've added OpenCL support in this release. So we've had a lot of uh, customers have been asking us, you know, when are you going to give us an opportunity to use some of these uh, uh, OpenCL cards that are in our Mac uh, uh, 15s and 17-inch laptops. So we're going to start OpenCL um, work, and we'll release it first on these two laptops and expand that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, OpenCL. Click OK. Uh, we also still work great with, uh, uh, with other graphics cards. And you'll notice that uh, we've got a yellow line here, which is now telling me that that's uh, uh, now, now we'll cue that up and play that in real time. So remember, I did apply an effect to that. So now look what happens when I start moving this around, I'm affecting all four layers in, in real time. This laptop's doing its best to keep up. Give that a second to bounce back. And the faster uh, CPUs you have, uh, the more uh, uh, you know, uh, bandwidth you'll have, you'll be able to add more layers of video. Uh, the better graphics card you have, the more effects that you can start to stack on. What's also really interesting about some of this, just to let you guys know, our graphics environment on GPU work parallel with CPU. So the faster your CPU is, because remember, all the decode coming off of the uh, um, video down there is all done off the CPU. So, so some effects are GPU, some effects are CPU. That's parallel processing. Really, really nice. So very, very fast uh, and fluid motion there. Other things we've done, um, we've taken the warp stabilizer from, uh, from After Effects. So we've have a lot of, have had a lot of people have asked us about uh, this sort of shaky cam video. You sort of see how this has been. Uh, it's a GoPro video that's sort of vibrating uh, over here. So and I can even bring this up full screen, by the way. We do have a new, a new cinema mode. You can see it's very, very shaky. So how do I, uh, how do I fix that? Well, very, very simple. I'm going to come over here, go to my effects window, and just show you where this is. I'm going to type in the word warp. And as you'll see uh, under the warp stabilizer, it's also accelerated by that OpenCL or GPU environment. Uh, again, working hand in hand with the CPU. So now at this point, I can go in and say, let's turn that effect on and give it a second. Bring that up full screen for you. And you'll notice the shake is pretty much gone. So that's what the warp stabilizer does. It's uh, pretty amazing. Now, if you want to know how it works, I can come over here and say, Let's just um, stabilize and crop this shot. Or actually, for those of you that might be new, let me just stabilize it only 
and sort of show you what's, what's happening here. You can sort of watch the video. You give that a chance to come down. If you watch the black lines that are up here, they're kind of showing you the amount of calculation and the work it is that the plugin actually has to do. So you sort of let it calculate that. So what we have to do is sort of crop that in. So the plugin actually handles all of that for you. So we've had a really good response uh, from the customers saying, wow, this is really awesome. And you see how fast this is. I can sort of look at this stuff and play this back and say, wow, that's great. I can go auto scale that. I can synthesize edges and sort of do what I need to do. This has been getting a big, big response. Now, the other thing is, is there's a lot of people out there using iPhones and Canon 5Ds, and there's a process known as rolling shutter. So I mentioned rolling shutter because we actually have that control under the uh, warp stabilizer. So you'll notice here that I have, uh, I have this one called rolling shutter ripple. Well, that doesn't take a whole lot of uh, CPU to process that. So we actually have a separate plugin um, called rolling shutter repair down here that I can actually use when I don't have to do any stabilization, but I just want to get rid of that, um, that's, that sort of, uh, you know, warble that happens on the screen. So really nice. A lot of, a lot of things have been thought, uh, thought out about that. We've been really, really fast uh, to sort of get some of that feedback into engineering. So let me show you another workflow. Here's a, here's a piece that comes up. I'll put this up full screen and play some of this out for you. And we'll talk a little bit about our integration with After Effects. So you've got this really cool piece, this Hot Wheels piece. And what someone's come back and said, okay, during this particular scene here, I need you to put some text up on here. So um, I would have to export that out, give it someone, a, you know, the video file, have them open it up in After Effects, apply their effect. They have to render it out, get it back to Premiere. Well, now it's really easy just to come in here and right mouse click and send that over to After Effects. After Effects will launch. This is called Dynamic Link. We're in our fourth generation of Dynamic Link. It's really, really fast. And again, Dynamic Link uh, loves a big CPU, so you want to make sure that you're throwing lots of CPU power at that. It also likes a lot of memory. So you'll notice that I've got this here. Now what I want to do is I, as I play this out and I'm looking at this, um, I want to sort of study that. Now what I have to do is I have to be able to put text somewhere in here and have the text appear as if it's in 3D. So how am I going to do that? Because this isn't 3D, this is just flat video. Well, we have a new feature uh, where we can come in here. It's called, uh, uh, it's a 3D camera tracker. That's going to start to analyze the data. Now, the reason I mentioned uh, CPU, this is another great place to start to use some of this calculation. So again, I'm just on a laptop here, a nice Core i7 laptop doing its job. It's actually doing fairly decent. It's, it's, it's crunching through that, but that really gets to be fast. You put a dual eight core, 32 threads on that, and it'd probably already be finished uh, by now. So it's almost done. It's going to basically now take that data, and what it's done is you'll start to see these track points that are here, and those track points are going to allow me to stick things to that so it stays in 3D. So if you start to see how some of this, these track points are laid out, I'll just sort of grab a uh, track point here. I'll put some text on there, and you see it's already sort of in that 3D space. I'll just come in here and type in a little bit of that. Come down here and make a, some quick adjustments on that. Oops. Pull some of those down. So again, you have your full After Effects view there. Now, what I might want to do at this point is I want to make it look like the Intel's just uh, logo is just coming at me. So at this point, I don't really have to do anything because we've already calculated all that. So you'll notice that text will just sort of fly and stay right within the frame as if it was shot that way. So very, very easy to do. Now, if I come back over to Premiere Pro, Dynamic Link automatically sets that up. So if I sort of play this back out, come back this way, play that back out. I'm full screen in cinema mode inside of Premiere Pro. There's my Intel text and it comes out. So the dynamic linking is just an incredible feature uh, inside the new, uh, new Premiere Pro working hand in hand with, uh, um, with After Effects. It works great. Okay, one of the last things I'll show you is what we've done for multicam. And in Premiere Pro, we've had a lot of customers asking us about multicam. 
Um, we used to only have four multicam. Some of our competitors do 64. We now do unlimited. So let's go back to that uh, Intel discussion on cores. You probably don't want to do 101 camera angles off of a USB stick. So <laughs> if you happen to have dual 8 core, 32 threads with a Thunderbolt feed to it, you're going to be able to do a lot of multicam. So let's go down and look at this and see if I just take a couple of these clips. I'm going to right mouse click. I have a new feature uh, you'll see down here behind me called uh, multi-camera sequence. So I'll go create that. And I could use time code or endpoints, whatever I want. And then I'm going to right mouse click and just take a sequence from that. And here's my multi-camera sequence. Let's bring up a multi-camera uh, monitor window. Just go ahead and dock this up here. So now I've got a pretty uh, standard issue multicam. That's how that works. And from here I can just sort of pick out whichever shot I think I want to start. Maybe I'll start with the driver. I'll click OK. That'll start. Come down here. Click through some of that. I had a chance to queue up those drives. I need my Thunderbolt drive on here. And I'll click OK and I hit stop. Come back and just play that out. And then there's my multi-camera shot coming right out like so. So multicam, very, very easy to, uh, to do. I even have the ability to go in there and change my shots and add all sorts of things. And uh, when you're all done with your video, we have a brand new version of uh, Encore. Encore is now our Blu-ray uh, and DVD application. It's 64-bit, so it's really fast. We also have updated our Adobe uh, Media Encoder. So I can go in and pick out whichever file types I need to. I can send this over to Q. That will launch the new media encoder. And one of the things I like to point out about media encoder is we've now grouped all these into different types of devices. We've got uh, Android devices, Apple, iPad, uh, TiVo, uh, Blu-ray, all of these different formats, lots of formats for broadcasters out there, OP1A and, and all the different MXF. Uh, we write P2 cards, which are very cool. So pretty much dealing with all the vendors. You now have the opportunity uh, to make, make uh, sets. So I'm going to go in or groups. I'm going to go in and just make a folder called the Intel set. Maybe after the end of this uh, recording, they might want to put this on an iPad, maybe a, uh, an FMS server, uh, maybe put it on, uh, on a, a cell phone or uh, maybe a Blu-ray. So at this point, I can just go down and start to say, well, I need to be able to put this in full uh, 1080i. So I start to build out these presets and start to figure out what it is I want, and then I can drag and drop these, and it automatically queues these up, and it'll spit those out. Very incredible. I can run this on, off a workgroup server um, and have a workgroup folder and start to drag and drop things. It really works great. Well, that's a quick look at Adobe uh, Premiere Pro and After Effects. Thanks.